Sometimes, when you hear a passage of Scripture, it sounds so wonderful, so comforting, that it carries you. It seems to almost enter into your being and fill you. Faith can be buoyed by such texts, the words sustaining us and the bleakest moments when things seem to be falling apart. They can give us hope, even in the most hopeless of circumstances. We hear the words read, we adopt them as our own, we memorize them, we set them to music, we sing them, They live inside us. Today's psalm is one of those texts. It is so easy to hear our story within it, for for we've all faced more than our fair share of trouble, of hardships, of bad news, of disease, of death, of loss, separation, and it can all be devastating, like we are being attacked by enemies, swallowed whole, overwhelmed by the raging waters, trapped like a bird in the fowler's snare. And here in the depths of despair, it can feel so good to be reminded the song of the ancients. A song like the one we just sang, Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say, if the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, and the torrent gone over us, then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord. God has not given us over to be a prey for their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. This is the song our soul longs to sing. So put it on repeat. Play it in the car. Add it to your Spotify playlist. Walk to it. Work out with it. This is the song. That is, until until we listen to it again, maybe a little bit closer, and we hear something that doesn't quite sit right with us. There's something in the text that is troubling, and we just can't seem to shake it. You see, sometimes the sacred text do that to us. They simultaneously provide us with hope 
and present us with difficulties we would rather not face. But if we are going to take the text seriously, not literally, but seriously, if we are going to be good stewards of these texts and wrestle with their message, we really can't ignore the seemingly insurmountable paradoxes. We have to have the courage to actually critique them. So the problem with the psalm, yeah, there I said it, the problem with the psalm as I see it is at least twofold. First, what happens when our experience is radically different from that of the psalmist? What, what are we to make of faith when we cannot find a way to say, to sing, to confess that the Lord is on our side? What are we to think of the divine when in reality it feels as though the enemy, tangible or invisible, seems to always have the upper hand when we find ourselves overwhelmed? tossed and tumbled by the raging waters of our day-to-day, when the torrent has indeed gone over us, when we find ourselves caught in the fowler's snare and there appears to be no way out. What are we to do with this song, these words, then? Is our faith failing? Is God gone? No longer reliable? Yeah. What happens then? It is important that we realize that this is not an individualistic psalm. The people who wrote it And those who originally sang it, sang it together, like we did just a moment ago. This is not my psalm, nor is it yours alone. This is a song of a community of faith. And its meaning grows from within and moves out of a community of faith. And you know that to be true. You've experienced it. If if we are honest with ourselves on our journey of faith, there have been times. There are times. There will be times. When you absolutely cannot believe because your present is a living hell. The same is true for me and for the ones sitting beside you, for everyone who is a part of this community of faith, of of any community of faith. And it is precisely at those moments, those seasons of unbelief, when we carry it for one another, it is there that you can believe it for me. And perhaps I can believe it for you. We believe it for one another. We see it in one another's lives. And we bear witness to the truth that that we are still here in this together. And this can only happen in community. In in fact, it is the transformative power of community, of a community of faith. We hold this together, especially when we individually cannot believe. It is there where we sing. If the Lord had not been on our side, 
our troubles would have overwhelmed. Indeed, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth and everything in between. And that leads us to a second potential pitfall of the psalm. If the psalmist and their community sing, if the Lord had not been on our side, now, what does that mean? Does that mean that there are those who God is against? Does God really take sides? Some of the worst theologies of our day and throughout history have posited God as being exactly for certain people, exclusively. The ones in power, the victors of war, the comfortable, the prosperous, the conquerors, the ones who believe rightly, the ones who possess the proper understanding of Scripture and therefore of God. And this perspective has led to atrocities of all kinds, to persecution of those deemed others, to justified hatred in the name of the divine. It has been used and is being used as a way to create and blame enemies and leave others out and cast aside. It has been used and is being used to, to scratch the itch of drawing lines around ourselves, creating outsiders and insiders who look, believe, think, practice their faith in politics, and behave just like me. But that kind of division is not the message of this psalm. God is not for those who sing it and then against everyone else. This is not the nature of the divine who, to whom the entirety of Scripture bears witness and the life and teachings of Jesus reveals. Of this passage, Dr. James Howell, who is the pastor of Myers Park United Methodist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, wrote, God can be on your side and of also on the side of your most implacable enemy. God not only can be, but God is on your side and on their side. How strange. And yet, God made both of us. God won't settle for less than all of us. God is committed to the holiness and wholeness of me and of him and of her and of them and of all those other guys. God is on the side of us all at the exclusion of no one. God is on the side of right beside each and every one of us. Especially, but not exclusively, the marginalized and the oppressed. And the invitation for all of us is to do the same. To manifest this in our own lives. To come alongside one another during the times when we have lost faith. In the moments when we are overwhelmed. Precisely when we cannot find ourselves singing the song. We are called to be Examples of the way of the divine. To be on one another's side. To hold one another up. To believe when others simply cannot. 
to strive together for a world where everyone thrives and there is no need for anyone to live in fear. Friends, let us sing the song together. Not because we have it all figured out, but precisely because we don't. May our testimony as a community of faith be that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth and everyone and everything in between. Let us sing together. To God be the glory. Amen.